once upon a time in the ancient lands north of Roman Empire and south of Vikings, with Russian steppes appearing when you look east, people were living in harmony. But these tribes weren't your ordinary people. Because they possessed great strength, courage and faith. Ancient Romans called them Sklaveni. In fact, many ancient nations called them by different names. Some migrated west in the lands of Bohemia, and some went east to the mountains of Ural and Russia. But there was one group left, which migrated south, past the Pannonian fields of today's Hungary, between the sea and the Great Balkan Mountains. Today, we call them South Slavic people. Now you may ask, why did Slavic tribes start trading Europe in the first place? To put it as simple as possible, the area where all the Slavs lived together was constantly attacked by Hunnic and Avaric nomads no. from the Russian steppes. The first recorded trade was back in 6th century, in the year 527, when South Slavic nations were pushed by Huns out of their territory into the Byzantine Empire, led by Justinian I. Many raids caused the Byzantine Empire to search for an alliance instead of constant wars against these tribes. The Balkan land stretched all the way from Alps down to Anatolia. It was populated by Slovenes in the north and by Croats and Serbs in the south, with their borders stretching all the way to the coastline of today's Montenegro. Even before the arrivals of the Slavs, there were other tribes like Illyrians and Thracians. Together, they decimated the population of native Romans, eventually pushing them out. Croats and Serbs took Dianetic Alps and part of the Balkan mountains for themselves with both kingdoms even getting some coastline. Slow winds were up north, below the mighty Alps, close to Germanic people, later even creating their own vassal state, called Carantania. But for today, we will focus only on one of these kingdoms at a time, starting with the history of Croatia. Croatia, as we know today, went through a lot of cultural changes, geographically speaking. If we are talking about their traditions, those are very old, dating back probably to the early Bronze Age, the same time Celts were wandering around Europe. Along the Serbs they arrived through the Carpathians, settling in what is today Slavonia and Dalmatia. A 10th century treatise, written by Constantine VII, is one of the rare documents that mentions the migration of Croatians with other Slavic tribes throughout Europe. He mentions that Croats originated from the land, called White Croatia, behind the Carpathian Mountains, in today's West Ukraine. Even Romans knew about Croatians, because they mentioned them a couple of times, calling them Croati. So the early Slavic communities could have consisted of different provinces, ruled by different cultures, with similar language. It is also written that Croats are a subject to Otto, the king of Francia, but have their own dukes, called Banovi. They were of pagan origins and were friendly with Turks. After almost a century long conflicts in the area against the Byzantine Empire, it all ended in the year 608. And Byzantine king Maurice ended the Balkan campaign. And from that point on, up until 818, the very first Croatian duchies were formed. The Principality of Lower Pannonia, located in today's Slavonia and a part of Hungary, and the Duchy of Croatia, which controlled the coastal cities. Lower Pannonia was led by the most important ruler of the province in the Croatian history, Ljudevit Osowski. He, with the help of other states like the Karantania, Carniola and the Timochani started a rebellion against the Frankish kingdom. The rebellion started in 819, but the Slavic people were defeated against the mighty Franks in 823. After that, Croatian states fell under Frankish rule. Two decades later, the Frankish control was stopped by the reign of Duke Nisla. He was succeeded by Duke Trpimir, who founded the Trpimirovic dynasty. If we jump in time a bit, at the end of 9th century, the Christianization of Croatian states started in 879, under the Duke Branimir, when he received the papal recognition by Pope John VIII. Now, to be able to talk about the first kingdom of Croatia, you have to jump to 10th century, in 925, when the very first king of Croatia, Tomislav, was crowned. After his reign, there were many other Croatian kings, but the two most influential and famous in Croatian history were Petar Krešimir IV from 1058 to 1074 and later by King Dmitar Zvonimir who reigned from 1075 to 1089. In the reign of Petar Krešimir, he used the great schism of 
1054. In this period, he united the Croatian states into one and built the new ones like Biograd, Nin, and Šiveni. He was later captured in 1074 by the Normans and his reign ended. It continued through King Dmitar Zvonin, who was also known to be a wise king that developed the Croatian kingdom. He was killed in 1089 by his own soldiers that betrayed him. This started a famous Croatian legend, the curse of King Zvonin, that began a 900 year long curse over Croatian people for killing their own king. After this, the Ladislaus I of Hungary claimed the crown on the basis of Zvonimir's wife Jelena. This only angered Petar Snačić, who was a rightful heir to the throne, and started a war which ended in 1102, with him losing the war. This started a personal union of Croatia and Hungary, with Coloman I as a ruler. From the period of 1102 to 1527, a lot happened in Croatia. The Croatian-Hungarian kingdom, was invaded by Mongols in 1241. The Mongols made it all the way down to Split, following Hungarian king after fleeing from battle, meanwhile burning the city to the ground. The Mongols eventually withdrew after they received information about Ogedai Khan's death, second son of Chengiz Khan, the great Mongol leader. Later, Croatia was once again a war zone when the Ottoman Turks invaded, pillaging the country, crippling it severely, in a desperate attempt to try and find some help, Croatian noblemen met in Cetingrad in 1527 and chose Ferdinand I of the House of Habsburg as the new ruler of Croatia. In 1593, the long Turkish war would start a 13-year-long warfare on the territory of Croatia, Serbia and Carantania. Ottomans' defeat eventually led to stabilization on the border between Croatia and the Ottomans. Let's take a trip forward in time a bit. To Napoleonic Wars, Napoleon conquered Dalmatia and founded the Illyrian province. On March 25, 1848, a political petition was formed for the recognition of Croatia as its own state within the Austrian Empire. They submitted the petition on March 29, and the Emperor Franz Joseph I didn't show any intentions to meet any requirements from the petition, and so Ban Josip Jelacic forbid any Croats from receiving any more orders from the government in Budapest. In the year 1867, a dual monarchy was established, Austria-Hungary. The Magyarization of Croatia led to massive riots in 1903, in which Croatian protesters burned Hungarian flags. After the end of World War I in 1918, they declared independence from Austro-Hungarian Empire. Later the same year, Croatia joined Serbs and Slovenes to unite all Slavic people in the Balkans in the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes. The concept of how the kingdom should be governed was a main reason for the disagreements between Croatian and Serbian elites. But because the Croatian army contributed only around 10% to the Yugoslavian army, they didn't have much saying in anything. In 1928, during a parliament session, Huni Šaracic, a deputy of Serbian's People Party, shot at Croatian deputies, killing Paolo Radic and many important Croatian politicians. Stjepan Radic, brother of Paolo, was injured in the shooting and later died. The Radic brothers were recognized for trying to unite Croatia and make it independent. Vlatko Macic, who succeeded Radic as a leader of the Croatian Peasant Party, was in prison. Ante Pavelic was exiled and started the ultranationalist Ustaše movement. But with the rise of Nazis in Germany, there was a possibility of another war right around the corner, and so the Serbian party decided to fix relations with Croats. Croats, being the largest ethnic group in the country, posed a threat to Serbia in the future, and because of that, they gave them their own Banovina, a Croatian province inside the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. In 1941, the Nazi occupation of Croatia allowed the Ustaše movement to rise. They formed an independent state of Croatia, or NDH for short, by siding with Nazis, they built their own concentration camps, targeting minority Serbs, Romas and Jews. The biggest and most known camp was Jasenovac, where around 600,000 Serbs and other minorities were killed. In the same year, communist-led partisan movement started to rise with Josip Broz Tito as its leader. They were anti-fascist and gained popularity very quickly. With all that, they gained power over Croats, Serbs, Bosniaks, Slovenes and Macedonians, 
and by 1943, the partisan movement gained the upper hand in the country. Two years later, in 1945, closing on the end of the war, with the help of Soviet Red Army, they expelled Axis forces. A large number of Ustasha and their sympathizers and anti-communists tried to flee to Austria in hoping to be captured by English forces and later being offered refuge. But England, following the Bleiburg repatriation, captured the fleeing criminals and sent them straight back to Yugoslavia, where they were charged and executed. As most of you guys know what happened later, we will just take a quick trip. On November 19, 1945, Elections held place with only one communist-led party. More than two weeks later, the Federal People's Republic of Yugoslavia was declared. On 31st of January 1946, they established six republics as an autonomous provinces. The country distanced itself from the Soviet Union in 1948 and started to build its own way to socialism with Josip Broz Tito as its leader. On April 7, 1963, the nation changed its name to Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, or SFRJ for short. Josip Broz Tito was named President for life. Life was quite peaceful in Tito's reign, because nationalist ideas and motives were banned. All up until Tito's death on May 4, 1980. Good evening, Roosevelt, Stalin, Churchill, Chiang Kai-shek, De Gaulle, Tito, the great allied leaders of World War II, all gone now. Umre drug Tito. Yugoslaviens president Josef Tito avled. Er starb nach schwerer Krankheit und monatelangem Todeskampf heute Nachmittag im Alter von fast 88 Jahren. Miles de personas vestida de negro, expresión de un auténtico nacional und vor allem die Hauptstadt Belgrad hat dem heimkehrenden Tito. Nationalists almost weren't heard of in the state, but after tensions were starting to rise. A lot happened in Yugoslavia. So much, in fact, I will have to do a part two, where I will explain to you guys what went down in Croatia during this period, all up until the present day. We will take a look at Yugoslavian war and see what really went down. Balkan is an ancient place and there is a lot to talk about. I will do a multiple part series of this, where I will explain all the Balkan country's history. I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new in this quick video about Croatian history. Leave a like, so I know you guys like this kind of videos. What can I improve? Leave it in the comment, and I will try to implement it in the future videos. And as always, stay safe, stay educated, and until next time.